Shalom, shalom, brothers and sisters out there. We're going to continue on discussing Psalm 103. And in this psalm, as I mentioned before, we're revealing God's nature, okay? And we finished off right here on the 11th nature revealed in Psalm 103. And what was revealed was that he has mercy for fearing him. And that fear for him is our reverential awe of him. When we respect his nature, we respect his omnipotence, we respect his creation, we respect his word, his will, and, and his covenants and his testimonies, okay? And for that, we receive mercy from him, all right? Now, we're going to continue on here to number 12, which reveals that he removes transgression. So only by God does he remove transgression. And what verse do we find this in? We find that in verse 12, where it says, far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgression from us. What a blessing that is. And what that means is that he is separated in relationship to sin and death according by his grace, okay? He has separated our relationship to sin and death. So even though we all have a relationship with sin and death, Almighty God has separated us from that relationship, all right? And he has replaced that relationship with the word of our almighty God and our savior. And he has replaced it also with our salvation, his revelation and his glory. So we give thanks and praise for us being positioned to truly reveal the fruits of his Holy Spirit, which has been poured out upon us and we find within us, helping us to testify of his glory, helping us to testify of his revelation, helping us to testify of his salvation. Okay, so let's continue on here. Uh, he pitieth, he has pity for fearing him. Now, what a blessing that is that the Lord has pity for fearing him. And we find that in verse number 13, where it says, Like a father pities his children, so the Lord pities them that fear him. And that sympathy and sorrow aroused by those who have extreme reverence and awe for God. So God has a sympathy and a sorrow for us when he recognizes that we have our awe for him, that we take into reverence his glory, his omnipotence, his power, okay? When we recognize him as our rock, our salvation, okay, our deliverance, when we reveal and we, we show ourselves to believe in these types of things, and remember, when we believe, that means we trust, adhere, and rely, okay? We have to trust, adhere, and rely on our salvation because when we do so, sympathy, sorrow is aroused in the heart of Almighty God. So he has sympathy and sorrow for us, okay, because of the way in which we respect him and seek to be obedient to his word. So that's our blessing that we receive, his pity upon us, okay? And that also helps us understand his nature. And it helps us to see that we are a lot like him. We are truly made in his image. Just as he is Father, Son, Holy Spirit, being a core quality of the Trinity. We are a core quality of the Trinity, body, spirit, and soul, all right? So when we receive this blessing and we receive our salvation, then we receive that core quality, all right? We receive the core quality that we received and were able to witness upon the throne of King David, being he who no man can see nor has seen, but was revealed, mirrored, and personified by the grace of the Holy Spirit within that mortal man, Tafari Makonan, who revealed the glory and the delegated name of authority of his imperial majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie I, that we could properly promote the whole of God's word from Genesis to Revelation. So that's a blessing that we receive in Rastafari. This double portion anointing we receive by the blessing of his Holy Spirit becomes because he has pity upon us. If he didn't have pity upon us, he never had to show us that glory of the Son sitting at the right hand of the Father. That could have just been something that was going on in heaven and we were unaware of it, but he revealed that glory unto us, all right, just as he gave us our salvation before our eyes. He didn't just forgive us from heaven, did he? Say, oh, it's all good, y'all. I forgive y'all. Don't worry. Everything's straight. You got my grace. He didn't do that. He came down and he revealed it to us. Well, that's the same thing he did by and through the Holy Spirit within that mortal man and to reveal the delegated name of authority of his imperial majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie I. So he came down and revealed his pity for us by allowing us to witness that tangible fulfillment of biblical prophecy. In the new name of his imperial majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie I. But I digress. Let me continue. All right. The 14th thing that Psalm 103 reveals is that 
he remembers we are dust, okay? And what verse do we find that in? We find that in verse 14 where it says, for he knoweth our frame. See, our frame is the way in which we created, the way in which he molded and made us, okay? So he understands us being us being fashioned in his hands, us being fashioned according to his, according to, to his righteousness, okay? We were fashioned according to him that we could soon reveal and receive his salvation, all right? So with us being fashioned in these flesh suits and with this sinful nature, okay, he recognizes us being made as dust. That means that our creator knows and constantly considers taking into consideration and account of our sinful nature. He takes that into consideration. So we have to take into consideration our sinful nature as well. And that's why we must appropriate the whole of his word from Genesis to Revelation so that we can truly show forth that glory that we receive by and through that Holy Spirit which gives us that grace and truth of Jesus Christ. All right. So let's continue on here. To number 15, righteous unto children's children. Now that's a blessing, okay? And we find that in what verse? We find that in verse 17, where it says, It's righteousness unto children's children. And that is the blessing of God that follows one's descendants as as, as so do our sins. So the sins of man follow his descendants. So much more does the righteousness of man follow his descendants, okay? So we have we have to take that into consideration, all right? Especially when we consider our nature. We have to realize and we have to be willing to have, uh, we have to have repentance for the sins of our fathers because it's that nature that is within us, all right? And that's what God is explaining here by his righteousness is passed down unto the children's children. So the righteousness of your fathers is also within you, just as well as the wickedness of your fathers is also within you. And that's what we must repent for. We must have a change of heart, a change of mind. We must heartily amend our past ways, okay, and be renewed in the newness of our mind, especially renewed in that new name of his imperial majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie I, all right? So we are those who receive his righteousness unto the children's children. So just as God says that the sins of the father make the child's life twice as hard, that's the same nature it is with Almighty God. The blessings of the father make the child's life twice as great. So when we receive his salvation, when we receive his revelation and his glory, our children, our descendants are empowered to receive that as well. And that's why it's so important that we accept what was taken from us. You see, the heritage that was stole has been returned sevenfold, okay? And we have to receive that heritage. And the only way we can receive it is if we have a reverential awe of the Father. And in having a reverential awe of him, we confess our faith in Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, our black Lord and Savior. And we receive his Ruach Kadesh when Memphis Kadush, his Holy Spirit, allow it to be poured out upon us, allow bubbling waters, rivers begin to flow from out of us. And that's the blessing that we receive. Just as it says right here that he satisfies our mouth. He gives us words. He gives us utterance to proclaim his glory, to proclaim his salvation and his revelation. All right. So we have to recognize that if he gives us that glory, he'll bless our descendants with it. If we're willing to be faithful, if we're willing to be obedient to his word, it passes down the righteousness unto the children's children. All right. And last here, number 16, we have his throne in heaven. OK. And and that's an interesting thing. What I want to do is I want to go to uh, <clears throat> I'm going to go to Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17, verse 21. And this is going to help us all instantly, instantly realize where that heaven is and, and, and help us to realize how much of a blessing we receive in his word and his truth. So I'm at, I'm at Luke chapter 12 at chapter 17, verse 21. And it says, neither shall they say lo here or lo there for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. So when we know the kingdom of God is within you and he says that his throne is in heaven, well, guess where heaven is? Everyone's waiting for it to crack the sky and come down out of the sky. But no, no, no. Your heaven is found within you. And you shouldn't be a later man. You must be willing to press into the kingdom because the kingdom is found within you. All right. So we can't be dismayed at all the ways of the world because they have so much interest in material things that 
that, 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 that moth, dust, and rust can corrupt. We have to realize that we truly have that kingdom of God within us. And within us, that's where we should be placing our blessings and all our gifts. We have to seek things that we can place within a place where moth, dust, and rust can never corrupt. And that's where we find the kingdom of heaven, which is within us. Because if the kingdom of heaven were upon this earth, if it were a physical place that I could go visit, then I guarantee you that 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 those who are there would would fight for the Lord. They would they would seek His name. But you don't know of a place like that on planet Earth because it doesn't exist. But if you'll receive His salvation, His revelation, and His glory, you'll have that kingdom of God within you, and He will be seated upon the throne of your heart, and He will help you to reveal His glory, and He will satisfy your mouth with words, and He will forgive you, He will heal you of all your disease, He will redeem you, He will give you a crown, He will give you strength. All right. He will satisfy thy mouth with bubbling rivers of water that well up within you, that help to strengthen you, that help to testify of his glory, his salvation, and his revelation. And this is the blessing that we receive as he executes upon the righteousness. He executes righteousness, which means that he reveals, he sets it forth. He brings that righteousness unto our hearts, okay? And we must allow what has been brought to our hearts to rule upon the thrones of our hearts. Okay, and that's what we receive in this last nature that God reveals in Psalm 103, his throne in heaven. So as we read in Luke chapter 17, verse 21, the throne of God is within you. Okay, his nature is found upon the throne and upon that throne, you will find your glory. You will find his revelation and you will find his salvation. You will find the core quality of our almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But you have to receive that righteousness that was executed for us. And that righteousness is Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ, our black Lord and Savior. So I give thanks and praise. And uh, my plan is to continue on with Psalm 103. And next thing we'll do, uh, we'll reveal the nature of the believer, okay? So I pray all of the eye are fruitful in revealing that we are truly his children of salvation, his revelation, and his glory. And what that means is that we have received his salvation in the name of Yeshua. We received his revelation by that new name of his imperial majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie I. And we received the coming glory of the new heaven and the new earth because we have faith. Faith is the substance of things not seen and the evidence of things hoped for. So we have such a strong faith in that coming glory that we proclaim it now. We proclaim that we are children of his salvation, his revelation, and his glory, being part of the Trinity, okay? We give thanks and praise. I pray everybody continues with the eye so we can all move forward in his grace and his strength and in his love, which he has for us as he executes his righteousness in our beautiful name, all right? We give thanks and praise. I pray that all of the brethren continue to be fruitful. I pray that the Holy Spirit fills you with all of his fruits, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, faith, goodness, gentleness, meekness, and temperance. Remember, the meek inherit the earth, and that's our responsibility to inherit the earth. So as we are to inherit, we must be willing to proclaim, all right? Give thanks and praise to the Most High.